Welcome to the Sumer Sports Show. I'm Eric Eager. I'm joined by Tay Seth and Jeff Benson from Circa Sports. Jeff, it's so great to have you on. We I've admired you from a long time for how well, you know, A, a just your Twitter presence is so, like, epic in my opinion, but also just, like, what you guys are doing at, at Circa it's just so you know it's you know it's just so different than everybody what everybody else is doing in the united states specifically but also just generally um tell us a little bit about your background because this this is just to me this is one of the 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 funnest events we've been to in 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 media and it's kind of centered around all the great work you guys are doing at circuit yeah so for me uh, i've been in the industry going on 12 years now uh grew up on the east coast in virginia you know played sports uh, obviously growing up my whole life um, you know, it's big into to soccer, basketball, golf, things like that. Uh, went to school on the East Coast, nothing to do with gambling uh, or, or the hospitality industry at all. Um, but obviously this was, you know, in college, uh, 2007 to, to 2012. So this was obviously way before legalization had uh, proliferated around the country. Um, and obviously the gambling space looked a lot different than it does today. So, you know, when I graduated 2012, this was really the only place to come out and do it, um, you know, from a legal perspective. So, uh, you know, worked that summer, drove across country with my dad, um, you know, didn't have a job or anything like that. Got out here, you know, bet for the first six months, you know, kind of learned a lot of what not to do. Um, and then was able to kind of get into the industry, get behind the counter. Um, and I think that really kind of sped up my growth in terms of understanding the industry, understanding that just knowing about teams um, and sports, you know, it doesn't really get you across the finish line when you think about gambling. So, um, you know, that education behind the counter has you know come a long way. Started obviously as a ticket writer, like most other people in the industry, worked my way up, became a supervisor, and then. Um, you know, had a really good relationship with Matt Metcalf. Um, you know, when you think about circus sports and what we're doing and kind of the Im- impact and the, you know, our imprint on, you know, what we've brought to the industry, you know, all of that has to do with him. Um, you know, him, circus sports was his vision. Um, you know, he and I are very alike uh, in terms of how we think about things. Um, so I've been over here for going on five years now. I'm the director of operations here. Uh, work very closely, you know, with Chris Bennett, who's our sportsbook director, Jeff Davis, who's our director of risk, the guys in the back, and really kind of just trying to highlight their product and the things we're doing and, and be able to translate that to, you know, guys like yourself who, who want to come in, um, you know, make bets and get down. So, you know, that's really kind of the uh, the bulk of it in terms of my background and where we're at today and you know, hopefully where we're going in the future. It's so interesting, right? Because, you know, the the you know, the, the rule of thumb is about 1% of bettors win long-term, right? And then the funny thing is, is even amongst that small group of people who have a clue, everybody has a similar kind of like, hey, I did, I did a, and I feel like myself included, like bet for a while before really understanding how the heck everything works. Your time behind the counter, was that, was that the transformational part and was it, you know, kind of obviously you eventually you guys profile customers, of course, somebody comes in with a sharp bet, somebody comes in with, with a recreational bet, like, and, and sort of looking at the differences between those two customers, is that, is that kind of how it evolved or what, what was the big like turning point as far as going from somebody who was like, as you said, like a, a new person in the business, you know, a, a, to now where you, like I said, you guys have the sharpest lines in America. I think. Yeah. I mean, obviously, you know, when you think about the space now, you know, you guys are in the content space, you know, as you look around the room here, Radio Row, uh, there's a lot of people in the content space. And obviously I was just on uh, quote unquote panel, uh, you know, during Bet Bash. Um, you know, I think there's just so many good things in the space. Um, and conversely, I think there's a lot more bad things in the space. And um, I think, you know, when you get behind the counter, you learn quickly, you know, about bankroll management, you know, how to make numbers, why you're moving numbers, and why certain people are winning and why certain people are losing. And um, obviously being here at Circa, um, you know, we have a very different approach. Um, you know, we're more of the shark model, whereas, you know, you look around in the DraftKings and Vandals, the, you know, points bets of the world, um, you know, they have a different more recreational model, model uh, excuse me, and uh, player base. Um, and I think for us, like I said, you know, we have some of the best bookmakers and odds makers in the world when you think about Matt Metcalf, Chris Bennett, Jeff Davis. Um, and, you know, just on down the list. Um, and I think, you know, the unique thing that we're able to do is, you know, with their experience, you know, we're a market maker in the sense that we feel comfortable with the numbers that we put out. 
Um, and then once we put out those numbers, you know, we go to war with taking bets, understanding the bets that we're taking, who they're coming from, why they're coming, and and then figuring out how to get to the right number as quickly as possible and in the cheapest, most efficient manner. Yeah, I mean, that, that's so you say the sharp model. For those that aren't familiar, our listeners who aren't familiar with that, it's basically this idea that you're you're using early, not only early but late betters, but like the the, the people that you you know rep, profile the sharp in, in some ways as consultants, right? Like you. Yeah, I mean, to yeah. kind of dumb it down, you know, when you if you open, you know, looking at the NFL board, you know, the Lions Chiefs game, you know, let, let's say we open Chiefs minus five. Um, you know, we had a guy like yourself who we profiled as sharp, you know, comes in and you, you bet the limit, you know, and you lay five. You know, we're obviously, you know, we've just opened the number. We're still in a price discovery process. We're still feeling it out. You know, maybe we go to six or six and a half on that first bet. You know, obviously that move's going to be very different come Sunday, an hour before mm-hmm. post. Um, you know, well, I guess Thursday, an hour mm-hmm. before post. But, um, you know, that move, obviously, when the market matures and becomes more efficient, that move may be different. Um, but obviously, if that's the first limit that we take and we profile you as sharp, we may be a little bit more aggressive, you know, off, off the jump. And, um, you know, then if the next bet we take is from somebody we don't profile as sharp and somebody who is a losing better and they take plus six and a half, maybe we don't move at all. Yeah. Or maybe we go from, you know, six and a half just to six. Um, and I think, like I said, sort of understanding it that way um, and where you're taking the bets at what numbers. Um, and then you get to a smaller range where then you can sort of trade in a two-way, uh, you know, process with, you know, people laying you know, six, uh, you know, people taking six and a half and kind of just going back and forth. But that early process of getting to the right number, you can only do that if you're market making and if you're taking bets from people that you respect and you know how the player program. Yeah, like contrast that with some of the recreational books where a they're not making their own lines. In many cases, they're 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 you know buying it from someplace like Canby or something like that. And then they're not all they're also not moving lines based upon the bets. You know, they're they're basically mirroring what you guys are doing or what maybe an, a, one of your sharper competitors are doing and moving on air in many ways. So it's, it's a totally different model. And I think, you know, obviously for you guys, you know, you're not, you're not actually limiting sharp players. You're, you're encouraging them because they get you to this number more quickly. Whereas the recreational books will often limit somebody. And in fact, I think you could probably expound on this. They're probably limiting people before it's actually statistically significant that they're a sharp better, especially in that particular sport. Yeah, 100%. You know, I think obviously with our experience, we're as good, if not better than anyone in the industry in terms of player profiling and knowing why a line is moving and what group is releasing and, and things like that. And I think when you look at you know, a lot of these more recreational books, as you alluded to, they're not making a number, so they don't know what the number should be. They don't have sharp players. So, you know, as Matt has always alluded to, you know, they're in the copying process the whole way. And obviously, you know, if we go from five to six on a game, you know, they can they, they can look at the DV screen and, and follow along with us, but they don't have the information as to how we got there. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and so I think that's kind of what it all boils down to. And, you know, the models are two different things, but for us, it's all about volume. And we just want to continue to write, write, and then write some more and, um, you know, utilize the information from, from sharp betters and, and guys who have models um, that can make our numbers sharper and more efficient. Yeah, I mean, something I, I even looked at before was, like in-game betting and in-game spreads between different books. And you can see once one book kind of changes their spread in-game, like Circa, like especially the Sharp books, those books that don't make their spreads as as much, like will also change their line to match it, even though you can kind of like just see like the the time series data where they're just following in in lockstep with with like the sharper books, which I think is really interesting. Let's talk a Circa Million, Circa Survivor contest that, that people are signing up for here. So... For the Circa Million and, and Circa Survivor contest, has there been any strategies that you've seen have worked, or is it kind of people figuring out how to how to devise their own strategies through the season? Yeah, I mean, I think obviously every year is different. Um, you know, the contests continue to grow and the number of people that sign up, and you know, I think so many different people have so many different approaches. You know, you know, there's obviously a lot of people that max enter both contests. Mm-hmm. You know. They take the same picks on all their entries. They take opposite picks, things like that. I think each individual contestant has their own strategies. I mean, when you look at Survivor last year, um, you know, I was I just at a dinner with uh, you know two of the guys, the two uh, guys or groups that uh, won last year. And one of the guys was a, a, a you know a single guy just by himself. He only had one entry in the contest. 
Uh, whereas one of the other, uh, you know, guys that won Survivor was a group of five guys. You know, they probably had 50 plus entries. So it's just uh, each group has a very different approach. Uh, and I think each individual, you know, when they go into the contest, you know, some people want to play the millions. Uh, they like and enjoy an ATS pick them against the spread contest. Some people like the more traditional survivor format uh, where they don't have to, you know, play around with the number of points and they just have to pick a team to win. So both contests are fascinating. I certainly enjoy both of them. And, you know, as the contests continue to grow, it's it's really cool to kind of see the uh, the game theory and the thought uh, behind how these people make their selections each year. Yeah, absolutely. And, and just to give uh, a little bit of context around this, the Circa Millions is $6 million in guaranteed prizes. Uh, we had Aaron on earlier. Uh, he, he astutely pointed out that if you get more than the 6,000 signups, you will, you will increase that the guaranteed prize pool, but you guys are obviously – putting forth the money uh and, and, and if there's an overlay so be it that's a, a, re a really cool a thing and then survivors eight million uh, in guaranteed prizes as well um like like you said uh jeff it's like you know if you if you don't want to care about the point spread survivor i think is probably more your your aim there and if you like uh you know to, to sweat out five games a week i think the millions is there but this is such a great competition and i think that when you look at you know the state of competitions in especially in this uh in the city, uh, you guys have kind of blown out the competition a little bit over the last few years. And I think a lot of that is just because everybody knows when they come here, everything is going to be, you're going to get the sharpest lines. You're going to get, um, you're going to get, it's sort of weird. Like th these competitions are very, like a person, a random person can win, but I think it's less a random person. Like, I think a sharp person also wants to play in this because they know that the lines are going to be, you know, they're going to be stale for circa lines, but they're not going to be stale for the whole market. Um, you know, the, the way that uh, the way that other the other competitions are having you guys post them early in the week. And so I think that, that that's a cool aspect of giving somebody a chance to win, but also knowing that you guys create create prices that that are better than everybody else. Yeah. And I mean, obviously, you know, for anybody who's listening, you know, that plays poker, I mean, you know, these are guaranteed prize pools. So. As you alluded to, you know, six million in the million, eight million in Survivor. Those continue to go up year after year. You know, all credit to our CEO and owner, Derek Stevens. You know, he's putting up the money. There's been many a year that we've fallen short of those guarantees, and he's had to come out of pocket. Uh, whether it's just the regular guarantees or obviously these bonus prizes that we've done. Um, but you know, a really cool thing is it's no rate. Um, it's a hundred percent payback to the player. Um, you know, if we get 7,000 entries in the million, the prize pool now becomes 7 million. You know, we don't make a dollar off this stuff. Obviously, we, we lose money from the labor and the materials and, you know, the cost of running the contest. But it's really our way to give back uh, to players. And, you know, we, we strongly believe we've changed the contest scene here in, in, in Vegas. And, you know, we hope to, you know, for this ultimate contest weekend, you know, we hope to make it something where people come out here, travel, get signed up for the contest, and it continues to be become a bigger thing year over year. Yeah, to give give people a little bit more context, uh, S September 9th at 2 p.m. Uh, is the last time that you can sign up for the competition. You must register here in Vegas, but you can play anywhere uh, through a proxy, like a 14 million combined uh, in guaranteed prizes. But as Jeff said, it will go up if there are more people that sign up. So this is a, a fantastic, and, and as you said, you're changing the game, not only uh, in the sports, you know, in the, in the uh, you know, uh, basically the bookmaker model, but also uh, with the competition. So uh, this has been awesome. Uh, we really love having you on and, and you're one of the, the more fun guests that we've had. So thank you. I appreciate you guys having me on, you know, hopefully uh, the chiefs go back to back this year. Um, and you guys have a great football season. Yeah. So, you know, so for Jeff Rattay, it's just been Eric. This has been the Sumer Sports Show live from Circus Sports.